Wow. <laughs> wow. Like that, that, that's all there is to say, really. That is all there is to say. I have no idea how we've pulled that off today, especially after that first half, but I'm not complaining at all. What a day, what a result, what an atmosphere, and it feels so good to be back in SE7, man. It feels so good to be back down the valley, my second home, and watching these beautiful boys in red and white play again. It finished at the valley today, Cholton Athletic 1, Derby County 0. Yeah, definitely a game of two halves, I guess you could say. Maybe that's the best way to describe the game. Like I said, first half was pff, absolutely awful, to be honest. Absolutely terrible. And Ben Garner summed it up, I think, best. Like, I guess, reminiscence of what we saw last season, really. Certainly was not something I expected, especially from a Ghana team. But I am very impressed with the way we clawed it back in the second half, the way Ghana got those boys back and fighting. And we played some really good football in that second half. And ultimately, I think it's fair to say, on the day, while Derby, I think, were miles the better side for the majority of the game, that may be a bit controversial, but I just felt they looked the better team, especially in the first half. It was just a case of us being able to take our chance on the day. Derby... Just couldn't find the back of the net. Let's get into this match reaction, shall we? Starting, as ever, with the starting 11. We named, I think, one change from the team. No, two changes, sorry. Yeah, we named two changes uh, from the side against Accrington Stanley. That was Conor McGrandles coming in for his first Charlton start in place of George Dobson and Charlie Kirk coming into the side in place of Dialang Jaisimi. Kirk moving over to his preferred left-hand side and Blackett Taylor was moved to the right. The rest of the team was as it was. Jaden Stockley as the striker. Fraser and Morgan occupying midfield alongside McGrandles. Uh, the back four was Sessignon, Owen O'Connell, Ryan Innes and Sean Clare with Joe Wallacott in between the sticks. Now, I must admit, heading into the game, I was quite surprised to see Dobson dropped. I don't think he was as impactful in the Accrington Stanley game compared to what we're used to, really, with Dobson. It was nice to see McGrandles get a go, you know, get some minutes and get a start. But like I say, despite Dobson not being the most active against Accrington, I was quite surprised uh, to see him out of the team. It was really nice to see Kirk get a start as well. Um, I would have thought that Garner would have stuck with Jaisimi because I thought Jaisimi was fairly decent against Accrington. That could be controversial, but he handed Kirk a start. Um, yeah, which I had no real complaints about. The rest of the team was fine, apart from Owen O'Connell. For me, I would have put Sam Lavelle in O'Connell's place, uh, especially from how shaky he was against Accrington. Uh, but yeah, no, other than that, I didn't really have any complaints. I sort of knew what sort of squad we was going to go with. And yeah, was actually quietly confident uh, going into this game, but knew full well that Derby were going to present a test. They were unchanged uh, from their win against Oxford. Obviously, their main threats, James Collins up front, Barkusen and uh, Mendes Lang on either wing. Then you've obviously got Conor Hurahan in midfield alongside Corey Smith and Max Spurs, Joe Wildsmith in goal. Uh, makeshift fullbacks in Jason Knight and Hayden Roberts, I do believe, with Curtis Davis and Iran Cashin as as the centre back, so they're no mugs. They are no mugs, you know. Even though their team has been thrown together in the summer, obviously with the administration period, and obviously Liam Rossini's future is still very much up in the air of him being uh, interim manager. They have built a very good squad. The first half was absolutely abysmal. It was absolutely shocking, uh, reminiscent of last season, completely just a spitting image. I, I don't even recall us being able to complete a pass, let alone get the ball in their half up until about the 41st minute. Like, we were giving away so many passes, you know, in possession. We were absolutely shocking from the back. Defence looked absolutely awful. Derby were at times just popping the ball around us, just skinning each other. We're falling over ourselves. And if it wasn't for Joe Rawlicott, really, who once again, in my opinion, was man of the match today, if it wasn't for him inside the first half, we'd have been lucky to go into the break not 3 or 4 nil down. Honestly, it was that bad. Wallacott pulled off some outstanding saves in that first half. Had a really good one to deny Collins. Then pulled off a really good save, like a, a really like close, got down really well and like, just stuck an arm out to deny uh, Mendes Lang from a back heel attempt. Pulled off another good one as well uh, late in the second half. But he'll be really angry with the defenders in front of him, especially for the first half, because the amount of opportunities that we gave Derby and how much pressure we put Wallacott in is a disgrace. And... I'm not one to single out players. I don't like singling out individuals, especially considering that apart from, in my opinion, Wallacott, 
maybe Sessignon and Blackett Taylor. Everybody else was dire. But I'm going to single out Owen O'Connell again. And I have no idea what's going on with him. But he has been such a worry in the opening two games of the season. Yes, I know it's the first two games. But it's not a good look when you see a defender like that doing the stuff that he does. Especially today as well and against Accrington as well. But for someone who's a ball-playing defender, I've never seen somebody so shaky on the ball as him. And honestly... After that performance, Sam Laville has to come back into the team and replace him because he really was poor inside that first half. Done a bit better in the second half. I see him pull off a couple of blocks and some good tackles. But the first half was shocking. I remember, I think, literally on the stroke of half time, he just turned around and lost the ball to James Collins and Collins struck the post. It was just shocking on all counts, really. Like I said, we just couldn't get the ball in their half. Like, looking at the body language of the team, we just didn't look arsed. Do you know what I mean? We just didn't look like we cared. And I think the best opportunity of the game, or the first opportunity of the first half that we got, was through Charlie Kirk. He, a defender made a mistake. I think it was Cashin or um, or Davies. I'm not sure. I think it was one of their centre-backs. I'm not entirely sure. But they lost the ball literally in the centre of the pitch. We're talking about the 45-yard 40, mark, maybe. Kirk gets hold of the ball. If he can drive forwards he's one-on-one -on -one with Wildsmith but he just decides to lob Wildsmith who was off his line and he just shanks it completely wide the best opportunity of the game and the first opportunity of the first half that we had and squandered like that was just shocking and I was absolutely fuming just sat there just watching him do that we did have a good opportunity though towards the end of the uh, of the first half where Kirk's cross was met by uh, Stockley and Wildsmith uh, pulled off a good save. I think, to be fair, Stockley headed it straight at Wildsmith. I think we have to consider ourselves lucky that we went into the break at 0-0 because, like I said, if it wasn't for Wallacott pulling off those saves, we would have been about 3 or 4-0 down, honestly. Our defence let us down massively. Uh, I think we missed George Dobson. Obviously, Conor McGrandles did come off uh, with a concussion. Obviously, he counted as a concussion sub, hence why we were allowed to add an additional substitution. Obviously, the rules this year are we're allowed to have five off the bench, but um, if you have a concussion substitution, you're allowed an extra one. So that's why we brought on five on top of Dobson coming on for McGrandles. Um, like I say, uh, it was nice to see McGrandles get a start, but it was very clear that Dobson is the wrong player to drop because when he came back in, back into the team, he made a real impact. And for me, I think he changed the game. Uh, he got stuck in. McGrandles, I think, struggled to do that. Um, he looked a bit shaky, gave the ball away a few times and obviously, unfortunately, went off with a concussion, which I hope is not too serious and I hope he will be back involved very soon because the last thing we need right now is injuries. But... Yeah, I think Garner did get it wrong uh, with dropping Dobson. Um, yeah, you don't do that. You don't do that. Second half was just a complete change of pace, really. We just completely turned it around. I don't know what Garner said to the boys at half-time, but he really got that team playing. And seriously, we turned on the gas in that second half from the off, really. I think we were the team that were just pressing forward. Stockley had another opportunity similar to the one uh, at the end of the first half. A good cross from... Uh, I think it was Claire or Blackett Taylor, I'm not sure, but a ball come in from the right-hand side. Stockley gets ahead to it and, yeah, straight uh, Wildsmith, really. Stockley also dragged the shot wide from the edge of the 18-yard box. But, yeah, I think really from the word go at the start of the second half, we really turned the game around and we were playing some good football. You know, we were passing it nicely, weaving away from Derby's attackers and defenders. You know, we were getting some decent balls in the box. Blackett Taylor came into his own, really, and it was... Him that gave us the only goal of the game and gave us the winner. Charlie Kirk, massive improvement from him in the first half as well. I think personally the best half we've seen in the Charlton shirt so far. He done really well on the left-hand side. Played in a good little touch into Albie Morgan. Morgan had a shot across goal on the left foot. Wildsmith could only parry it out, but only as far as Blackett Taylor, who was stood completely open at the back post. And he was there to tap it in for 1-0. Absolute delirium in the covered end. Honestly, it he took the roof off the valley. It was absolutely incredible absolute carnage and the atmosphere just built up from then on you know the support was absolutely brilliant um all game as per usual but yeah Blackett Taylor really happy for him I think even on the right hand side obviously I think he is naturally preferred as a left hand uh, sided player but I have said in previous videos that I think he's more comfortable playing on either side of the pitch and yeah Garner experimented with him on the right hand side and it worked a treat Blackett Taylor again was absolutely superb and deservedly so got himself a goal but like I said, it was just a massive improvement from the first half. Charlie Kirk, I think, was brilliant in the second half. That is Morgan, again, a uh, significant improvement. He also uh, tested Wildsmith quite nicely as well. Had a shot at the edge of the box. Drove forward really well. Derby gave him way too much space. Drove forward really well. Took a shot on the right foot at the edge of the box. And Wildsmith gets down really well to parry it out for a corner. Fraser, I think he was okay again. Uh, I think he put in an, uh, an all right performance. Got forward well in the second half. Especially put some decent passes in. Sessignon and Claire. Claire especially grew into the game in the second half. I think he came more into midfield. 
uh, in the second half, which again worked a treat. Innes, I thought, was okay as well. And obviously, Wallacott, I think, for me, was man of the match. But yeah, it was a significant improvement in the second half. The football we were playing, it was just such a contrast uh, from the second half. The substitutions we made, uh, Miles Lieber made another cameo. He came on in place of Blackett Taylor and again impressed. Uh, I think Jack Payne came on for Fraser. Again, really impressed with him as well. That's the most I've seen him in the Charlton shirt so far. He looks like a little whippet, really good with his feet and looks like he's got a bit of pace about him and he can drive forward. He also tested uh, Wildsmith in stoppage time, had a good effort. Uh, saved by him inside the penalty area. So yeah, good display from him. Uh, who else came on? Uh, Charles Claydon came on in place of Sessignon. Uh, Lavelle came on. Dry Seamy was the other one as well. He came on in place of Charlie Kirk. Um, I thought he was okay as well when he came on. But yeah, big improvement, like I said, from the first half. But Derby did also have opportunities. You know, it was kind of like backs against the wall. It was a bit nervy after we got the goal because Derby were coming forward, but we were just able to deal with them, you know, punching it away with Walcott catching crosses, heading them away. Jason Knight missed an absolutely golden opportunity. I don't know how he missed that. And quite frankly, I think with the opportunities that Derby were gifted with and the opportunities that they created for themselves, I think they'll be very disappointed for the fact that they didn't score. Derby were a threatening side, you know, we, we can't deny that. They were a very threatening side and I would like to say that for the majority of the game, I think they were the better team. At the end of the day, if you can't score you don't deserve to win a game and the truth is Derby they didn't find the back of the net and we took advantage I think with our first shot on target um, in the game and one of our only shots on target and we must not have had many uh, maybe about I don't know about three or four possibly five max um, but yeah at the end of the day we took our chances when it mattered and yeah that was the full time whistle Charlton Athletic 1 Derby County nil. A massive result, a massive, massive result, especially against a side like Derby, because like I said, Derby are no mugs, you know, even though they have had their difficulties, the team that they've thrown together, obviously they still have to gel together, and I'm sure that they will um, come about the Christmas period, I think we'll know how well they're going to get on, but they are a good side, and they definitely threatened us today, and probably should have got something from the game, that's probably... Uh, uh, the fairest analysis I can give from the game. I really like the way that Garner inspired that team and the way that he was able to change the dynamic. You know, he was just able to. I don't like I said. I don't know what he said to them in the in uh, in the change rooms at half time, but he really got that team plan and the football that we were showing. I think was I guess a glimmer of what we should expect from Ghana this season. Defensively, definitely a work in progress. Obviously, we do need to strengthen as well in that area as well. You know, we are light defensively. Obviously, with Deji Lerre going out on loan to Wildstone, we need another centre-back. Obviously, we need a natural left back. We don't know have that as well. Would like us to get another striker in as well. I think Jaden Stockley, he had opportunities in the game, but again... I didn't think I saw enough of him again today. Yeah, on the whole, really good day out. Really, really good to be back down the valley. The atmosphere was incredible. Lovely weather and a fantastic result. A really, really good result. The performance, obviously, first half, we need to put that way behind us. Obviously, Ben Garner said, uh, and rightly so, he never wants to see a first half performance like that again, which hopefully we never will, fingers crossed. But yeah, some good standout performances there. Some big improvements from some players that hopefully will be sticking around. I'm speaking specifically about Kirk. Hopefully, he does stay at mid interest because I think like I said in the second half that was the best half we saw from him in a Charlton shirt but yeah massive improvement in the second half and yeah we took our chance when it mattered and we have got some pretty big three points on the board and hopefully we can carry that on into Sheffield Wednesday next weekend and try and get a result there and that won't be easy. That's a tough place to go to and obviously a very tough side to crack down. So that is it for this match reaction guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel and turn on those post notifications so you are notified of every time I upload a new video. What do you guys think of the game? Let me know in the comments below. This has been Tyler Ronitson. Have a nice day and I will see you all in the next video, whenever that will be. Take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all then.